Okay, well, we're going to talk about interior mapping. Maybe some of you already know this technique because, well, it's rather old, but uh, it's still being used in games. It was invented by that guy. I, I won't try to, to pr pronounce his name. I, I actually uh, sent him an email about this talk and he was uh, really happy about it. Um, he actually told me that until two years ago or, or some uh, along those, those lines, he wasn't even sure if people was actually uh, using it. And well, he was kind of happy. Um, this talk is, is based in part in, in his pa uh, original paper where he describes the technique. But well, at some point we'll start diverging from from those ideas and instead of applying some some things uh, he explained how to do later in the paper we'll we'll try to do something different and and one specific problem we we need to take care about well this is like a magic trick so first let's see how the illusion looks Well, this is, this is an illusion because there's no geometry. The on, only, uh, only the, well, the, th the three boxes. There's no inner geometry at all. And uh, since this is a magic trick, well, I, I need uh, some, some volunteer to, to check that these are normal boxes with, with no... <laughs> With no tricks. Uh, anyone wants, wants to check it? One, no, no volunteers. Some volunteer. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I'll show it to you. For instance, this way, only three boxes. Okay. So, well, this is the illusion. Okay, uh, how this illusion is created? Well, let's talk first about the, the ceilings, the ceilings and, and the floors, because we are talking now about uh, well, all, all the horizontal planes, regardless they are facing up or down, because in the end they are the same. This is from the, the original paper. Here he's just trying to, to explain us that the, the only thing we are doing, if uh, this gray area is the, the actual geometry, we, we need to know, we need to be able to cast a, a ray from the camera to the pixel that is being currently rendered in the pixel shader. And, and that way uh, we can extend it until it intersects some, some of these horizontal planes. It's as easy as that. Later, we'll check if the camera, uh, if the vector from the camera to that pixel is going upwards or downwards, because depending on that, we'll be using or we'll be considering it a, a floor or a ceiling. So well, we, we start with, with this simple uh, shader. We, we are uh, so far using an unshaded material because uh, we only want to to see in, in colors if we are doing it correctly. And uh, this is quite important. We need to do our calculations in object space. I, I think in the Godot documentation it's called a local space. It's the same. Object space, local space. Uh, so well, in the vertex shader, we are assigning the, the vertex position, because in the vertex shader, as an input, it's in object space, to a, to a varying that so we uh, in the we can have uh, that uh, object position before it's transformed to to uh, view position in the in the fragment shader, and we do this in order to know uh, in order to pass to the vert to the fragment shader the camera position in relation to the to the object. If well, if this matrix 
the, uh, this matrix is the one that uh, transforms a uh, model space or local space or object space to view space. If we take the translational part, so the, the, f the fourth row of it, and invert it, well, from its inverse, we, we get the position of the camera in relation to the object. Well, yeah, yes, uh, some very simple math. I'm, I'm uh, very bad at math, so I, I wouldn't be able to, to do anything much more complex than this. Well, uh, the, the first equation is, is just uh, the equation of a horizontal plane. Okay. Just uh, any, any point in that plane only has fixed uh, its y component. And, and this is the equation of a, well, of a ray, a, a point if uh, it contains and well, some coefficient, some coefficient times the direction to, to know uh, well, all the points along it. For us, uh, we need to give uh, more meaningful names. So that, that D, uh, in the end, for us will be the, the, the Y of, of uh, the, well, the ceiling or floor wh where it is vertically. And uh, well, our ray is from the object, from the camera position in, ob in object space uh, in the direction of the direction of the camera to the current uh, pixel. So this is where uh, that, that ray. Well, just by solving the equation system, uh, we found a way to, to compute this t, which in the end is how far uh, from, the, from the camera is the point we found the intersection. And this is just to get the x and z uh, coordinates in that plane. We wouldn't need them um, only to to know if we have hit a ceiling or a floor or something like that, but uh, we need them for something else, and we'll see. Well, in the fragment shader, uh, well, uh, just a, a word of warning. Um, along this talk, we uh, won't be seeing production quality code. It's uh, written in a way that it's uh, easy to understand. We'll talk a bit about uh, how to optimize it later. So, uh, well, we get the, the vector from the camera to the current pixel or fragment. And here we will store the, the height of the ceiling or floor we have intersected with. Uh, this blue will be 0 or 1, depending on if we have hit one or the other. So we can visually check if our results are right. And depending on if the, the ray between the camera and the current pixel is upwards or downwards, we have hit a ceiling or a floor. The, the only difference between both, aside from uh, giving a different value to the, to the blue, is that uh, in this case we need to, well, in the end, um, subtracting one from, from ceiling would be more or less like uh, applying floor. That would be quite poetic because this is the floor. But in the end is that, uh, that this uh, very simple formula is from the, from the original paper just to a, a stepify the y positions. So we have uh, floors at some uh, fixed height. And well, this is uh, what we have found in the, in the previous slide, how to compute the, the t. And, and those x and z uh, we, we had computed are really useful as texture coordinates. By now, we, we are not applying textures, but uh, we are using that using those for uh, red and green and blue, well, as we already know, to, to tell apart ceilings from floors. So let's, let's see how this first step looks. This is it. If now we can see that at, at fixed intervals, uh, we have uh, either floors or, or ceilings. They extend up to the infinite. So we'll need to, to add uh, walls or something else. But we know that our, our computations so far are right. We, we have those, those planes, those, that fake geometry without 
uh, having to, to add any, any real geometry. Okay. We want to add textures, so it, is, it stops looking so ugly. So we, we define a couple of shader inputs, uh, a texture for the floor, another one for the ceiling. And well, mm, this is this is not uh, optimal at all. But uh, instead of just having here the the condition uh, checking the the y component of the camera to pixel vector, we are storing it in a in a boolean, so we can later check if if we need to sample from the ceiling or from the floor texture. And well, since in the end the the GPU will be probably uh, sampling both textures. And that's why this isn't uh, really, really optimal, but shows quite, quite well. So let's see, now with, with textures. Okay, the, the assets I've used for this are quite, quite bad, but look much better than the, than the crazy colors. So this is, we, we have one texture for the floor, one texture for the ceilings. Okay, this is starting to look promising. Let's add some walls. For the walls, so far, uh, we will be rendering the same texture, regardless where they are facing, just for the sake of uh, simplicity. And it's exactly the same we did uh, with the horizontal plane for floors and ceilings, only that in this case, uh, we need to do it for, uh, well, oh, no, no. Uh, there was some step before. Uh, this was still about ceiling and floor, but since the shader code is starting to become long, because we will be checking uh, walls uh, in two different ori orientations, uh, we need to make this code a, a bit more compact. So from now on, it will be re rewritten this way. It's in the end the same. Only that the is, is well, well is ceiling uh, was more conveniently uh, renamed and reused as is floor. And it's not a Boolean, but a float, because we are really interested in having it as zero or one, rather than true or false. That will come in handy later. And now we can add the walls. We so far had the floor height constant. And we also add now a room size one. Mm, or our rooms will be a square, just to keep it simple. We add a new albedo texture for the walls. So the pixel shader, or its main part, now looks this way. Uh, we are doing almost the same for all the three orientations. For ceilings and floors, we were dealing with horizontal planes. For walls, we need to deal with uh, walls uh, that can face, uh, so to say, north or south, and a site for those that can face east or west. This has a, a lot of room mm, for optimization as well, because we, we are we could easily uh, rewrite this in an expression that, that uh, computes uh, all of them in, in one step. And then in order to, to paint the, the right texture, depending on the case, this is again quite unoptimal, but shows uh, what we need to do. Uh, this, this works uh, a bit, uh, well, a bit or more, more than that, like uh, sign distance functions. They are quite popular now in, in Shader Toy, for example, where they are writing shaders that can render quite complex geometry only uh, with a more or less complex function that can tell, uh, that can intersect a rays from the camera to, to that uh, procedurally um, generated geometry. In our case, that uh, procedural geometry is, is as simple as, as a set of 
A-axis aligned planes. Uh, so, well, if, if the ceiling is the closest to the, to the camera, well, we, we still have to, to mix the ceiling or the floor. Te well, this rather than mixing, since uh, each floor uh, would be zero or one, is choosing one or the other, but in a, in a branchless way. But for anything else, either it's uh, front, back walls or side walls, uh, we don't need to, to mix anything because at, that, at the point we are sampling the texture, we know for sure which one to, to sample. So this is just uh, picking the, the right texture, applying exactly the same principles we, we have applied when we only had uh, ceilings. Let's see how it looks. Well, uh, we have already seen this, I think. Uh, huh. Well, th there was actually a, a problem here with the project because uh, adding an exterior uh, is, is, a, is another step, but well, le let's focus in the, in the walls for now. They are there uh, with the texture we, we decided we wanted for them. And well, they are axis aligned. Well, this is this was our goal for the exterior. Well, we have already seen how it looks, but it will be no no surprising at all that we need an, a new texture for the exterior of the of the buildings. And here comes something a, a bit different. Since the, the mesh uh, or, already, well, how, how to put this? Well, first of all, we can um, derivate the, the texture coordinates for that exterior texture by using the vertex coordinates because uh, that way we are creating some kind of flat, flat mapping. If we use for the uh, U component of the texture, the, well, the addition of X and Z, that it will be moving across the texture uh, regardless uh, which orientation the wall has. And for, well, for Y, that's trivial. We, we need to, to move vertically along the texture uh, depending on the, on the position of of the uh, on the vertical position of that fragment and lastly since we we have uh, we we want to have windows uh, we need to take care of the transparency of the exterior texture so in case well the this mixes the the pixel color uh, we had found uh, when we were only uh, um, caring about walls and ceilings but if the the alpha of the exterior texture is is one we fully apply the exterior texture that way when the alpha is zero so uh, when we have we are sampling a transparent area of that texture we'll be letting it uh, uh, will be seeing through it and and keeping the the, al the albedo or the color we had found previously So, le well, let's see it again. <laughs> That's it, that, that transparency. We, we have needed to compute the, the color only for, for the interior parts. And later, if the, the exterior uh, texel in the texture is transparent, well, it's opaque, we, we paint that, that texture instead. Quite quite overkill for the for the GPU. Artifacts, depending on the 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 hardware. Although well, I I've, I've seen these artifacts uh, both in my in my desktop computer and in the laptop. Uh, regardless, it was the, the integrated Intel graphics or the. Well, the, or the dedicated uh, GPU. Near the um, 
well, the boundaries of the exterior, it seems that the GPU was having some confusion whether we had a wall there or not. So, uh, well, uh, you, you know that uh, a GPU has a, a lot of cores, and these uh, pixel shaders are um, run in, in parallel, as parallel as possible. So, my theory, I'm, I'm not even really sure about this, but my theory is that some of the cores uh, thought that we had a wall, and s while some others didn't. So, I, I backtracked the problem. Uh, back to, to this. Well, this is about ceilings, but uh, it's, it's, it's the same. We, we get artifacts as well on the top and the bottom of the, of the building. So uh, my, what I found the, to be the most suspicious thing was that, that uh, ceiling function, maybe because there's also a, a quotient inside. Mm, I think I hit some uh, floating point precision issue. And well, this is my, my theory. If the, the white line is X and the, the white line uh, will represent the result of the ceiling function applied to it, well, if X is 0 0.5, it's clear we'll, we'll get 1. As if it's 1.5, it's clear that it, it will uh, round up it to 2. But if we are quite close to one uh, and well e epsilon away from one I think that uh, due to how the, the expression is is run in the GPU some cores say well it's zero and some others say it's one so uh, I, I wanted to give the uh, a name to this and obviously it's the the Schrodinger float How to fix it? Well, as simple as that. Just in the in the vertex shader, we we apply a slight uh, scale down to the object space vertices, so they are the the walls are. We are compacting it. Uh, how, how to say this? If the uh, if the geometry is a bit smaller, well, it it will be clear. Well, that uh, 0 0.999 will get us far enough from that uh, epsilon dangerous area that will create that ambiguity. So this is as simple as that. Let's see if doing that has really fixed the issue. Well, first, let's, let's check if that's, oh, where, where are my buildings? Oh, I. The, the uh, oh yes, where where is my brain? <laughs> huh, it's it's funny. Ye just yesterday, the GPU wasn't uh, too confident about if a wall was was here or, or not, but today we are not seeing it. Uh, well, as I've said, this is highly dependent on how your specific hardware works and how it's well scheduling the, the pixel shading. But well, in, anyway, uh, we, we don't want uh, it to be sure about uh, we have a wall just, uh, just there in the, at the window. So anyway, the fix uh, works for, for both situations. Now there, there's no ambiguity. Uh, something uh, worth mentioning is that this technique, in general, uh, doesn't care about the top and the base. The, well, the reason is that, for, for instance, in the Spider-Man game, where, where it was applied, as far as I know, the camera is, is never uh, above any building. But anyway, mm, as an exercise to the, <laughs> to the reader or something, uh, that can be easily fixed. You, you can use a, a different texture or something to, to cap uh, correctly the, the building. Well, uh, while in the, in the main paper, the, the author uh, started to, 
well to investigate some some other uses of this for, uh, well no uses some some extensions to this like for instance well having a different texture in uh, in different in the different walls or adding furniture or even people well that's interesting but in the end it's just uh, adding more more ray casting and and that's it and also he he explored Mm, creating the effect that, that some rooms are lit while others aren't, just to, to add more richness. When that technique uh, was invented, it was like uh, uh, 12 years ago. I think that, uh, well, well, normal mapping was a thing at, that, at the time, but well, full PBR wasn't. So let's, let's see how we can make this Mm, more close to PBR or to modern effects. We now need to care about both the the normal of the fake geometry of the fake geometry or the true one, and also uh, since we'll have normal maps for corresponding to all the albedo textures, we need to care about them as well. So well. Uh, this fake normal uh, will contain the the normal of any fake plane, uh, regardless its floor or wall. Uh, well, by by doing this kind kind of <laughs> clever trick, we we get the normal. For instance, if this ceiling of floor, if if it's a floor, the normal will be pointing upwards, uh, and if it's a ceiling, it will be pointing downwards. And for the normal map. Since we we need two different normal maps, the same way we needed two different albedo, well, we we are doing this this uh, horrible mixing to to choose uh, between both, uh, depending on if it's a, a floor or not. Because for for front and back walls, it's much much easier because we we only have a, a set of albedo plus normal map. It it's the same. Uh, how we uh, compute the fake normal is the same, only uh, it's in the uh, in another plane, and well, and for side side facing walls, it would be th the same. The interesting part, well, comes at, at the end of the pixel shader, when we, uh, aside from assigning the albedo, more or less the same way we did uh, earlier, we need to do the same to the normal map, well, to the normal map and to the normal, just to the normal vector of the geometry, if we want the, the lighting, the, the lighting in the engine to, to work properly. So we, well, in normal, at this point in the built-in normal, we'll have the normal of the fake geometry. And in fake normal, uh, well, uh, the other way around. In, in fake normal, we have the normal of the fake geometry. That, and in normal, we have the, the normal from the, the actual geometry, from the, from the box. Well, we need to use one or the other depending on the alpha of the stereo texture because uh, if you remember, depending on that, we are seeing through the window or we are seeing the, the, the brick wall. And for the normal map, it's more or less the same, only that uh, we have uh, made a, a quite different use of the variables but it's, it's the same reasoning. Well, let's see. Well, uh, as you can see, the, this section was called PBR. We, we haven't said anything about roughness, metalness, etc. but it's the same for, for everything you. The, the idea here is that uh, the same way you can just sample an albedo texture, you can sample any other kind of map and and uh, use it in the vertex shader, so the the lighting it takes it into account and works. So in this case, only with with normal mapping, we have a light here, crazily turning around, because well, it it has a a very simple uh, tool script that makes it rotate in the editor. And well, you, you can see the, the effect of the, of the normal mapping. This is a starting. So mm, the point is, imagine this with, with proper assets, uh, with 
with more sophisticated PBR properties, not only normal mapping. And even as an extension, I didn't have time to, to do it, but uh, we could make the window um, looking like glass uh, with, with proper reflections and, and all that. Well, there are more things that, that could be done on top of this technique. Well, glassing windows, different interiors. We could even have, uh, have completely different textures uh, depending on, for instance, the coordinates of the room or something like that. Different room sizes. All our rooms right now are, are square and exactly the, the same size of the, of the floor for simplicity, but it's not needed to do it that way. Lit and lit rooms, as I've told before. In the, in the original paper by the, well, by the creator of the technique, he does that, and in the, in the, in the demo he provides, uh, you can see that working. And about optimization, well, there's something, something worth mentioning. Well, I've already told you that the way I've been doing the computations and sampling is completely overkill because we'll probably have the, the GPU sampling uh, six textures for each, um, for each pixel. And in reality, we don't, we don't need that. So, well, how, how to fix that? Well, the, the most reasonable approach would be having all the textures for for instance, a single albedo atlas for the wall, for the ceilings, for, for the floor. And depending on uh, what we find when we do the intersection, we sample one area of the texture or another. Not one texture or another completely separate one, because um, if, even if we use mix or something, something like that to make the code branchless, we can potentially have the, the GPU sampling much more than needed, et cetera, et cetera. There's, of course, much more, much more room for improvement. We can uh, um, experiment with uh, different uh, shapes, not only um, boxes. We, we could have spherical or cylindrical buildings. Well, there's, there's a lot of room. Well, uh, uh, what about uh, the performance of this? Because this aside from being a way uh, to avoid creating well assets if you are a programmer and you aren't good at art this can uh, come in handy but aside from that for performance it's interesting and uh, well in the original paper the author did did some tests and with the hardware uh, of that time and he found that as the number of buildings increases this technique pays because for a, a small number of buildings, having actual geometry is cheaper. But if you are rendering a, a huge city, this starts to be much more performant than, than true geometry. So that's it. <laughs> Thank you. No. Well. If there are some questions, if we have time. So thank you for the, the presentation. It was great. Um, so I, I I found something pretty funny on your on your on your walls. It's that it's if it's on the corner of a box, you have two walls pretty much colliding uh, yeah. each other, but uh, they are not the same because you have a wall. On the part of the of the of the wall facing the other side. Yes. And uh, did you plan to do corner rooms where you just have uh, like a corner and you can see through the box pretty much? Yes. Pretty hard, I guess. <laughs> yes. Well, um, I I don't really plan to to extend the, this technique. My my main point uh, was uh, showing it up, but uh, that's actually something that that could be addressed for for a modern game. Also, in the corners, we have the problem that uh, if, you are, if you are looking it uh, from one side, you can see there's a window. If you look from the other side, 
through the window around the corner, you, you see a, a opaque wall. The, those are, are little things that, mm, well, are, they aren't uh, so important because while, while the game is running, they are probably just adding some richness to the background and uh, they are uh, tricking the eye enough. But uh, in case the buildings are more important than this, uh, that's of course something that, that could be addressed maybe, but not a not, uh, really complicated uh, expression in the, in the shaders. So you think it's possible then? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, I think so. Thank you. No, you're welcome. Um, so thank you, it was very interesting. Uh, you said f it makes sense for a large number of buildings. How much buildings approximately? Can you give any numbers? Well, I right now don't remember the exact numbers. And I, I haven't tested myself, to be honest. Uh, I, I got that information from the original paper. Uh, well, that's in the... Well, well, if you look for interior mapping, I think that will be the, the first result you will get. But uh, it's there. Uh, the, there you'll find the, the PDF and you'll, you'll find the details of the test uh, this, this guy made. Uh, well, uh, he added some uh, interesting graphs uh, uh, where you can see where, where the curves start to, to raise and, and that. But aside from that, uh, there's, there's nothing else I can reply. Okay, thank Sorry. you. Sorry. <laughs> Hello. Uh, do you know if somebody tried to do this with signet distance fields to have like volumetric interiors or something like that? I don't know for sure, but my intuition is is that probably someone has done it. Cool. Probably in, in, in Shader Toy, some people have created it because people is, uh, well, you of course already know that, but people is starting to experiment, uh, for instance, uh, well, uh, in, in Unity. Uh, we, I, I have a cube, but what you are seeing is a sphere. And well, the same way that people is, is doing that, for instance, to, to render a simple car just to show how a car paint shader works. I guess some people is doing it, but uh, I don't know for sure. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. Thank you.